Let's get to it. Hi, family. Today we are talking about money. Good old taboo money, don't talk about money kind of money. We are talking about the money. And I knew it was coming because I will end up having many sessions with the same kind of topic or conversations um, around town or with family or at the gym about the same topic. And um, so I knew this was coming, but today when I sat down to kind of channel before I sat down to record, it was like abundance, that's what we're here for. So that's apparently what you guys need right now and that's why we're talking about it. And I've told you before, I am constantly on uh, a money journey, uh, uh, discovering these limiting beliefs that I have that I am constantly trying to release. And so I'm not talking to you as a money expert. I'm talking to you as someone who is on this journey. And these are the things I've discovered. And these are the things that are really working for me that I'm continuing to practice because it is, it's nonstop. It's, um, you know, we're, we're just chipping away at that programming that we've had our whole life. So I've told you that I was a whoopsie baby. My, my brother's a year older than me and they had surgery to prevent me because they couldn't afford me. So the money, <laughs> the money identification with I am not worthy of money, um, has been long term. Now that is not because my parents made me feel that way, but if you are told at eight that they didn't have you because they couldn't afford you, you know, there there's just money stuff in there. And this is never, ever, ever to blame your parents or your spouse or whatever. You're here on your journey to discover what those limitations are so you can free them and call in the abundance that is your birthright. Now, we're not going to talk about attachment today. That's a whole separate podcast episode about once you, you know, are abundant beyond, but then are really attached to material things. Okay, that's not where we're going to today. We're just calling in the abundance that is yours. Because when you show up to that ocean of abundance, you can carry a thimble or you can carry a bucket or you can carry, you know, a... a cargo container, um, whatever it is, and it is there for the taken. But if you are a thimble person, you're going to have to get used to carrying a bucket. And when you get used to carrying that bucket, you'll be able to upgrade these, these in incremental upgrades to what you believe you are worthy of is kind of how you shift your abundance mindset. But we're going to get into that. Now, I know for me, one of the biggest hangups for me has been this idea that somehow having money is bad or greedy or dirty. Um, I came from a middle class family. I don't know that we had those conversations ever. I'm, I, I know we gave away when there was excess or we helped others. I don't think they ever told me that they thought that. I don't know where it came from. I'm just telling you, that's what I believe, is that having money is not spiritual. And I've had to work through that programming and those those thought processes that are really blocking me from abundance um, because I see it as bad. And so I've been working on on my limiting beliefs. But if you want to understand that money has nothing, nothing at all to do with whether or not you are a good person or a bad person or a hard worker or a lazy person. You can find somebody in every category who exemplifies the opposite. Somebody who does F all and makes bank on a daily basis just rolling in money you you can find people who work their tails off have a heart of gold and have not a pot to piss in so it is not about what we see as people's character values it is exclusively about what you feel worthy of and this is not your conscious worthiness you might be like nope i definitely think i should be rich and i will tell you 
in your subconscious, you have limiting beliefs that say otherwise. That's all there is to it. You do. So if you, if you want proof of this, 70%, according to Kiplinger and Ford, Forbes, 70% of lottery winners end up broke, right? Because they didn't fix the problem of not feeling worthy of having that kind of money. They never saw themselves as wealthy or comfortable with being wealthy. And so as it comes in, they find all sorts of release mechanisms to drain them of the funds that they do not feel worthy of having. And that could be, you know, your long lost cousin. It could be just really mismanaging and overspending, whatever. It's just like, I am at a threshold that my worthiness level is not capable of maintaining. So down it goes and you'll know people you might you might be the person where you get an influx of a thousand dollars surprise and inevitably there's a car repair that cost a thousand dollars or there's a new expense or a medical your kid falls and breaks their arm or whatever but sure as it comes in it goes out and if that's the case, you know you've got these blocks in there saying you're at threshold. You're at the level you believe yourself worthy of. And so that's why we're going to we're going to get in the dirty today. You it's not this high level I think I should have, you know, nice things whatever. I'm talking about we're going to look and find what are the beliefs that are blocking you. Another example kind of on the other end is maybe you think he's a solid dude. I don't know, but Donald Trump sees him very much as worthy of being wealthy. So it doesn't matter that he sucks as a business person and runs every business into the ground. What happens after his business runs in the ground? somehow he becomes a millionaire again. Does that, ha does that happen because he's a good person or doing good things with money or just because he actually sees himself as a millionaire and the universe supports that self-worth? You see it and so we will make it so. And so you have the people who get the influx of money and can't hang on to it and the people who lose the money and somehow it comes back to them and it has nothing to do with whether or not they're good people or hardworking. It is when they speak to themselves on the inside, what is the programming that they're telling themselves they are worthy of having? All right, so that's what we're dealing with. Money is energy. That's all it is. Money is energy. So for the people who cling on to it so tightly, guess what that is? It's a scarcity mindset. It says, I do not think any more is coming. Now that doesn't mean spend more than you have, but the people who hold on so tightly will not know the abundance that is available to them because they don't believe in it. They don't believe more is coming. So they clench onto it so tight. Whereas I feel like you guys do not change your spending habits because of this podcast. Really look at your finances. I'm just saying the more generous we spend in tips and services the more things seem to flow to us. It is very much just a circulation of energy and we send it out with love. Maybe, you know, we order something, a, a gift from a small business owner and we, we give generously and as we do that, more money finds its way back to us. It is just a circulation, but I've had to do a lot of, a lot of work to get to the point where it's not like you spent what on what? Um, because Mark and I have very different spending habits. And so where, you know, he might say free 99 for a reading, you're, you've lost your whatever I'd say you know, you have another watch. We just don't have shared spending goals, but now we are doing a better job of spending with 
gratitude. He's always done this. <laughs> I'm doing better and just allowing it to flow, knowing that it is coming back and trusting that um, whatever I spend in gratitude, in service, you know, for service for other people to uh, reap the benefit of this spending, that will come back to me. What I want you to do over the next week, think about your money story. Think about what are the things you tell yourself about money? Do you think it's dirty? Do you think that having too much is greedy? Do you think that it's not spiritual to have money? Do you think women earn less than men? What do you think about a woman who's made it to the top of a corporation? Do you question how she got there? I'm talking about like these are real things that might come up that should shimmer a light on some of the programming you have. If you are a minority, what is the story you know about what you should have compared to other, other people? If you are a single mom, what is what is what you should have do you see yourself as worthy of the same abundance or is it always i'm going to struggle i'm going to be i'm a single mom like i have to struggle we have these limiting beliefs about what is possible when truly what is possible is infinite i mean you guys the other day mark told me that um mark zuckerberg I don't know, he had some kind of stock deal and in one day he made $28 billion. Now I have gotten to the point where I don't even roll my eyes at that because it's like, I, I just can't even get my head around that at all. But I, I'm not mad at him about it. I mean, good on you for your stock deal and bless Oprah for helping me work through so much because I see her as somebody who uses power and money for the good um, of as many people as she could possibly serve. Um, but when we're talking about like, oh God, I can't have $5,000 extra to make my life easier. He made $28 billion in a day. I'm telling you, is is energy and the, some of it is meant for you when you clear out the blocks for it to flow for flow to you. All right, so figure out what your money story is. And when you find things that trigger you, fancy cars or brand names or, um, you know, anything, anything can be triggering about money. Like I know for me, when my kids go and they ask for gum at checkout, just stupid checkout with all their stuff, expensive stuff as you're leaving you know I've got three kids we're talking about those those little round things of gum that's like $15 to check out but now I'll catch myself and I won't make it like a money story with them I'll just say maybe next time or something because I know all of those no's for so long where it's like oh I'm I can't even have this I'm not worthy of this or or whatever that's not at all what the story was but that is what the programming you receive is um you know if you had a sibling who was entitled to certain things and played year-round sports. And then when it came to you, you, there was no money spent on your extracurricular activities. Like whatever those experiences were, your parents did not mean to make you poor <laughs> or make you blocked in your abundance. That was never the intention. But now it is our intention to find all of these places where we think we are less deserving or less worthy or have to work our butts off. That's a lot of people think you have to work so hard for every dollar. No, you don't. No, you don't. You do not have to work hard for every dollar. There's plenty of ways for money to flow through you without working your butt off.
So that is not to say you're not going to work hard for your money and some of it you will and there's going to be times in your life where you have to work extraordinarily hard. But if you are convinced that every dollar that comes your way needs to be hard earned, you are blocking money from investments or passive income or dead relatives or um, all kinds of ways that money can find you for ideas that you have. Um, so you've got to get rid of the programming that you have to work hard for every dollar so that you can open yourself up to the ones that you don't have to work hard for because they're out there too. And as you start removing these blocks, that's when inspiration comes for new things you could be doing or new opportunities or a new client or um, savings uh, of some kind. Something gets paid off or you don't have to figure out the how. And that's the beautiful part of it is as you remove the blocks to your abundance, it can flow to you effortlessly. And so it's really about um, kind of taking blocks off the damn wall to allow the river of abundance to flow. And you don't have to know what the source, you don't have to know where this river is flowing from. You just have to trust that it is. So as you find these blocks, from relationships or experiences you've had, um, you can start removing those blocks and also changing the story that you tell yourself. I have a friend on Instagram who posts 10 times a week about, um, you know, the bills coming in or that he is the bread loser, not the bread winner, and just all of these different things. And I wanna be like, please stop hammering that into your vibration. Like I am somebody who can't keep money. I'm really bad with money. I never have enough money. Here comes the end of the month when I'm out of all my money. This is not what you want to be reciting as your mantra. Like we're going to scrap all of that and kind of, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't have anything to say at all. <laughs> like stop talking about money altogether unless it is in affirmations of your upcoming abundance. And you can speak that in the presence, present. But um, really think about what these stories are, what you were taught about money from your parents. What is your relationship now with your spouse? Um, do y'all spend equally or do you feel like he's allowed to buy whatever he wants and you're constantly on a budget? Like, is there an inequality that makes you feel unworthy of more money? Have you, oh, this was for me. Have you made a big mistake with money in the past that you feel regret or shame or guilt about and you need to allow yourself forgiveness and acceptance that that was a lesson so that you can move on and not say, oh, I'm terrible at handling money. Look how stupid I was with this. Nope, you, you had a lesson. You had a lesson and you learned from the lesson and now you're moving on from that. So stop programming yourself with, I'm so bad with money. Um, Everything always happens. People say that all the time. Oh, it's one thing after another. First the this, then the this. You want to, it to keep being one thing after another? Keep talking about it. Keep saying how you are always spending money. Oh my God, my kids are so expensive. Is this, that, and the other. You guys, your, your thoughts have power, but more importantly, your beliefs have power. So if you believe that your children are going to rob you of every last cent, that you have, honey, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. So we're changing that. But really, as you focus on being in gratitude for your abundance, really, if you can't say anything nice, don't say it at all about your money situation. But think of all of the ways in your life that you are abundant, that you have this breath, that you have food on your table, that you have family, Think of all of the ways that you feel rich 
and start being super grateful for that as you start reprogramming how your relationship with money is, see yourself as abundant in health and family and love, or maybe you're just like a kick-ass athlete. Dude, that is amazing. That is your abundance, is your ability to perform on a, a sports stage. Like, that's really cool. And we all have so many different areas of success in our life if we want to look for them and really embrace them and see that as our abundance. And then as you're saying, I am so grateful for my abundance, you can feel it. You can feel the vibration of gratitude in those world, in those words. And it's not like trying to say, thank you for my abundance when you're struggling to pay your bills. Make it about what you genuinely feel like you are abundant in your life um, and and feel the gratitude for that. I want to share with you um, something that I watched. Hopefully I can link this in the in the show notes because it's really brilliant. But I found it the other day and it is Lee Harris who is a direct voice channel for the Z's but he is interviewing Sheila Gillette, who is a direct voice channel. That means um, her consciousness kind of steps aside. And she channels a group of archangels who speak through her voice. And this video was actually a couple of years ago. But Lee asked her, um, basically, what's going on with the earth with this hierarchy of power and this hierarchy of money and is the shifts that are coming on the earth going to level this out to you know make for a more even playing field and i found it quite fascinating because her response which was actually not sheila the the channel's response but theo the archangel collective's response was that the issue lies in the mindset of those on earth. And so if you took all of the earth's resources from everyone and distributed it out evenly, those who have now would soon again have, and those who have not would soon again have not. Because it goes back to not the equanimity of what is doled out, but what each person finds themselves to be worthy of. So it is back to that programming, that the clearing limiting beliefs, and that non-deservability that so many have, that they feel like others are more deserving or more entitled of wealth. Those with degrees should earn more or those from this background should earn more. Those from this state or whatever you have programmed in your mind that these people should have more than I do. And that's what we're working on. And that's like straight from the archangels. That's, that's not from Susan. That's that's the archangel saying, hey, you guys, we have got to work on your self-worth so you know that you have equanimity. Because first of all, our value is not in what we earn. Our value is not in what we have, even a little bit. You are a divine being whose worth is so far beyond money and material things. But you are in this earthly experience and can live and enjoy being here, hopefully with less attachment to those things because you're not taking any of them with you. But how you experience this life is cultivated on your beliefs of what you are worth. And so that's why we're doing this work to really identify what the, what the hangups are. What were those times in middle school where I've, I, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but the girls had the guest jeans and I did not. And I couldn't talk to them for that year that guest jeans were the thing. I didn't have the guest jeans. And so I couldn't be in the guest girl group. 
Anyway, those are the kind of things we have to find and identify. So you say, oh, my value is actually not in those genes. You know what else is really important is to stop telling yourself the story of, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. It's back to the same as like, I don't have time for that. Yes, you do. You're not prioritizing your time for that. The same with the money. You you probably can afford it. You might have to, you know, not make your house payment to buy it. But there's a lot of things that we say we can't afford. We can. You are choosing not to buy it. And that's very respectable. Like good job on making choices that are in alignment with the life you want to live. And so it is really back to focusing on where your priorities are, but stop talking yourself out of the money. That's what we're doing today is we're, we're allowing the abundance to come to us by changing the narrative that we tell about what we are worthy of having, worthy of managing, worthy of experiencing. I want you to see yourself as completely limitless in what you can have and experience and share with the world because the more you have, the more you can help others. And that's one of the best things I can tell you to do is write out some affirmations that really work against some of the program beliefs that you have. So for me, feeling like um, money is dirty, I had to work against that um, and say things like, I earn, an, uh, I earn an abundant salary so that I can give abundantly or I live and I give abundantly. But to give abundantly resonates so deeply with me and how could I find it unspiritual to give away money well i have to have it in order to give it so i have to call it into me so i have to really be okay with money coming into me so that i can share it so that i can invest in other people or um you know help them however i see fit um, i am open to money flowing to me in new and unexpected ways if you are somebody who gets tripped up on the how something is going to happen and you block your manifestations by trying to figure out what the course the universe would take this is a great affirmation for you because it is saying i don't need to know the how and you really don't i am open to money flowing to me in new and unexpected ways you don't need to know how it's unexpected it's written in the affirmation so that one's for you um i allow money to create ease in my life i mean think about if you hire a cleaner you are supporting her or him and their family you are offloading a job that you might not want to do but you are also providing employment for somebody else so that money that you have made that now you spend on somebody else is helping not only you live with ease but helping her or him you know put food on their table i manage my wealth with ease if you're somebody who thinks like money in money out like i can't manage money i never have money it is important to find the affirmations the daily talk that you give yourself needs to be changed from i can't do it to yes this is who i am and the more you are consistent with saying these things daily to yourself i'm telling you you will change how you experience life and how you experience money um uh, my last one is i use money to improve the life of others i know that i want to call in money to my life because i have a lot of things i want to do and having money helps me um, help others with their growing businesses or, you know, spend my time really freely so I can be present with my kids and go to the basketball games and do all of the things that I love to do with them. So it is really has been about changing my relationship with money, changing my perception of those who have money um, or or even feeling like I have enough 
isn't it so greedy for me to, you know, be practicing any kind of calling in more money when I already see myself as enough? Well, what is enough if I want to give more, right? So when you change how you think about things, it will really shift your experience and I'm here for it. And this is one I, I know y'all need this because it kept popping up and popping up and popping up in my experience with other people. And so I'm super excited to ask y'all to show me the results. Tell me how you're going to go through and find your limiting beliefs and start doing some affirmations and really take your head out of the sand and address money is not evil, money is not dirty, money should not be taboo. We can talk about it. We are talking about money. You're gonna get down and dirty with how you feel about things. There's no guilt for where these beliefs came from. They are yours and they're yours to release. So however you got them, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna find them. And then you're going to say, okay, I see where that came from and that no longer resonates with me. I'm going to change that belief to this. This is what I believe. I believe that money can flow to me easily. So I know there's going to be success stories and I'm here for it. I, I want y'all to all be swimming in the bathtub with your Benjamins or doing whatever resonates with you, however you want to to experience that new flow of abundance. I'm here for it. All right. Love you all. Have a great week.